Thank you for joining us for this week's episode. I'm Paula Williams. And I'm John Williams. And we are ABCI, and ABCI's mission is... To help all you folks out there in the aviation industry sell more stuff, products, and services. Absolutely. So today we're talking about emerging trends in FBO content marketing. Last week we talked about SEO for FBOs. (laughs) <laughs> and we talked about the fact that mark content is really the best way to do SEO. It is also the best way to do marketing because your customers are looking for information in order to make a purchasing decision or make a decision about where they're going to go uh, in their um, travel arrangements. You know, are they going to go to your FBO? Are they going to go to a competitor? Are they going to go to your airport? Are they going to go to a nearby airport? You know, what's the best... Uh, decision to make and you can help them make that decision right What's the whole point of marketing yeah and the whole point of content is to give people information so that uh, they have the ability to make the best decision for them and uh, you only want people who for whom this will be the best decision for them right yep okay so a lot has changed over the last two years in terms of content marketing Um, It used to be that people would do these big, long travel guides and other things that people could download or have uh, what we call gated content, where people would have to enter their um, name and um, email address and so forth and so on in order to download a a piece of material. Uh, That still works, and it's still a classic form of content marketing, Uh, but... There is so much information available on the web and all of your competitors are generating so much information now using a lot of the tools that are available like ChatGPT and and other AI tools uh, that it's not as effective anymore to have gated content. So what we want to do is make sure that you are providing the highest quality, uh, most useful content that you can, right? right? Okay. And most current. Exactly. So one of the best ways to do this is to ask ChatGPT, you know, or any other AI tool, um, what are the most common questions that business travelers have about Laramie, Wyoming, or, you know, whatever your location is? Um, you want to put together a Q&A based on the most common questions that people ask. And these AI tools are really, really great for generating a list of questions. And then you can go about answering them. And then you can get AI to help you answer them. <laughs> so, but, but you can't believe AI completely. And once it's done, you have to go in and edit it and sometimes research to make sure it's factual. Absolutely. I mean, AI is an amazing drafting tool. But um, we go through four or five iterations of a draft with AI, you know, saying, please write this more professionally, please fact check this item, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, with AI. And then we do it with three people, human beings, like um, carbon based organisms, right? (laughs) (laughs) Because AI is often wrong, um, especially about specific things that only people who are local to your area, only people who are aviation uh, industry experts, only people who um, are, you know, have flown into your area would understand, right? And then we vary the sequence of who actually gets it first. Exactly, because sometimes you'll see what you want to see, especially if you get used to reading AI-generated material. Um, you're going to start seeing, well, this isn't too bad. You That's know. right. <laughs> uh, you want to see how bad it is. So mm-hmm. we, we have different people um, read it first and make sure we humanize that content and fact check it and tone check it and all of the other things that we do. So, um, yeah. So FAQ, great tactic for generating um, a content strategy and for creating some great content that the search engines are going to love because they love that question and answer format. Mm -hmm. People go to um, the search engines all the time with questions that they need answered. So if your titles of your articles are questions, you're already a step ahead of the competition, right? Okay. All right. So um, another thing that you can do, augmented reality or virtual reality, um, tours of your facility, Uh, One of the really cool things that you can do, people who are especially first-time flyers, over the last two years we've had a lot of people who are first-time private aviation customers, 
And what they don't want to do is feel like they don't know what they're doing, right? <laughs> you know, how do I even get to that part of the airport? Where can I park? What can I bring on board? Do I get my own luggage out of my car? How do I manage all of this? Um, who do I talk to? What do I say? What do I need to bring? What do I have to have ready? They don't want to feel stupid. You know, I mean, that's just human nature. And private aviation individuals, more than anybody else, want to feel like, especially if they've got their clients in tow or their family in tow, they want to feel like they know exactly what they're doing and they're all prepared and ready to go. So one of the best pieces of content for an FBO is a tour. And uh, these can be, you can shoot these at regular speed and speed them up, you know, for parts of them and slow them down, you know, so it doesn't take forever to do this, but show people driving up, parking, getting out of their car, walking in, talking to the um, receptionist, um, doing all of the things that they would do, maybe walking out onto the ramp. Um, if there's any particular security protocols, make sure you explain those, um, any particulars about luggage or anything else. Um, if you are in ski country like we are, what do you do with your skis, you know? Well, you can take 15 minutes for the video and then chop it up into little pieces that uh, explain different parts of it. Exactly. So, you know, these can be YouTube shorts, these can be YouTube videos, these can be um, social media posts and things like that. So all of this can be used in a bunch of different ways so that uh, people understand where you are, how to get there, how to use your services, and how to feel really good about this, right? Yep. Okay, and if you want to take it a step further, you could even do a AR or VR tour of your facility where people can choose their own adventure, right? Do I turn left or do I turn right when I walk in the door? Um, so there's lots of ways to, you can spend as much time and money on this as you want, <laughs> uh, but we, ad advise, you know, even the mom and pop places, even if you're a really informal FBO, uh, at least have one little video of, you know, how to get there, how to do things, uh, what to do, where to go, and, and so on. And if you're really small, who to ask for. Exactly. That's true. Maybe give uh, some uh, employee profiles of, you know, some of the people that they will meet when they come to your FBO. Mm -hmm. So those are always popular as well. All right, so um, you know, there's a few ways to use digital technology and other things to make this work. Um, you know, for future shifts, things that are happening now, people are actually asking ChatGPT, "How do I plan a trip to Alaska?" With you know? great care. Exactly, <laughs> and ChatGPT is going to add a whole bunch of videos, or is going to add a whole bunch of content to their answer, you know, including possibly even recommending an FBO. We've had that happen where ChatGPT has actually recommended ABCI when somebody is asking, how do I accomplish a specific task? Hire a consultant like ABCI. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's super cool, um, you know, if you can optimize your content so that it's able to be used by um, the AI tools. Yeah. And uh, voice search is another thing. A lot of people will just ask their phone while they're driving, um, you know, which FBO should I go to? You know, the Hey Siri or Hey Alexa or, you know, whatever system they're using. So, you know, the question and answer format works really well and you want to make sure that it's optimized for voice as well. Of course. Okay. Last thing is video is uh, much more important than it was years ago. Yes. You have Google is, of course, they own YouTube, but uh, mm -hmm. they're prioritizing it over everything right now. Exactly. So video has become almost table stakes to have a well-optimized, well-run website is to have a, some videos uh, on that. And now table stakes has become that you want higher quality video than you did two years ago. Everybody's got the 4K monitors now. And the 4K cameras. And the 4K cameras, and you know, they even have retina on their phones nowadays, so your old videos may be looking a little tired. Uh, so, you know, you want to <laughs> make sure. Sketchy, would that be a word? Right. <laughs> so, you want to up the quality, and while you're at it, up the sound quality, right? Yes. Uh, sound is a thing mm -hmm. because sometimes people will search while they're driving and rather than watch they'll listen to what you have to say exactly so you know they're looking for videos but they're looking for videos just to hit play and listen to which is why we use this mm -hmm. 
And those of you that are not looking, mm -hmm. it's a studio microphone from the 1940s that Bing Crosby and all the other guys used because of its high quality right. and gives you a studio sound. Yep, exactly. So, um, you know, if you use our studio, we'll set up the sound and everything for you and, uh, you know, the lighting and everything. But uh, regardless of how you do it, you want to make sure that you're getting the best quality video that you can because it does matter. And uh, especially if uh, your competitors are uh, in the same field and you're serving VIP clientele. So you want to make sure that your video is of, of a quality that represents you well. Exactly. All right. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week. Go sell more stuff. Yeah, the industry needs the business. Absolutely. Yeah.